That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. Pirate treasure. Don't tell me. You're going looking for it. Yes, we are. And we're going to find it. Uh, but there's a treasure map, too. Yes, there is. Which you bought for 50 bucks from a down-and-out sailor with a wooden leg and a patch over one eye. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Dear Abby, a listener writes, Now that my husband's gone, I've tried to open my own charge accounts and have been turned down. It seems all our credit was listed in his name. Now I'm told I have no credit record in my own name. Signed, Stuck. You're stuck. This is a real problem for many women. Four out of five of you will one day be on your own. But if you know your rights, you can help protect yourself against that rejection. So take some advice from Dear Abby. Call our right stores for you and your husband to share charge accounts. Have them listed in both names, yours as well as his. Say you want joint charge accounts listed as Mrs. Mary Jones as well as Mr. John Jones. So you will have a history of credit, too. The law gives you that right. For more information, write for the free booklet, Women and Credit Histories, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. That's Women and Credit Histories, FTC, Washington, D.C., 20580. This is Richard Widmark. You know, if I had to define the term adventure in one short phrase, I'd say go looking for buried treasure. The sound of the surf and the wind, the searing heat of the Caribbean sun, the brilliance of the blue sky, the excitement of sudden wealth beyond the dreams of even the most romantic of us. All that plus the danger. Oh, yes, there's danger there, too. Because if someone knows where treasure is buried, you can bet your last dollar that someone else knows it, too. Anne Bonnie's golden doubloons, for example. She buried three chests full of them on the tiny island of the Zitterade. She took them from the Spanish galleon Esmeralda, which she sank with the guns from her own ship, because Anne Bonney was one of the greatest pirates who ever roamed the seas, mistress of her own vessel, with 47 men under her command, a woman at the top of her chosen profession. And right now, two very different groups of people are looking for Anne Bonney's gold. One of those groups is armed to the teeth, and the other people, uh, well, uh, all they have to depend on in their mortal danger is that tough guy, Harry Bennett. Yeah. And that's only the beginning of our story. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Anne Bonnie's Gold by Alan Caillou. Our stars, John Daner, Joan McCall, and Lou Horn. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. And now a special message of interest to shoppers across America from Sears. Everybody has been talking about inflation. Well, here's what Sears is helping to do about it. Starting the 1st of May, all prices in Sears Spring General Catalog will be reduced 5%. This means a discount of 5% will automatically be taken off the price of anything and everything you order from the Spring General Catalog between May 1st and July 31st, 1979. Also beginning in May, Sears retail stores across the nation will reduce their regular price of selected items, which means you can expect even greater values. In addition, for limited periods of time, Sears will sharply reduce the price on scores of items in our retail stores. Watch for these Sears super values on TV, radio, and magazines, and your local paper, and you'll benefit from price cuts each month. Everyone wants to control inflation. These are some of the ways Sears is helping to do it. Sears, where America shops for value. A kiss good night, and your gift of Sears nightwear will send Mom sweetly into dreamland this Mother's Day. Their winsome, pillowy nightgowns and sprightly PJs, or complete the appeal with a short or long dressing gown. Ruffles, 
spaghetti straps, prints for solids. Just a few dreamy ways to choose Sears nightwear. All airy nylon trico, loosely shaped for sleeping comfort. This Mother's Day, give Mom pretty nightwear from Sears. And sweet dreams. At most larger Sears retail stores. The Zitherade is a very small island in a very quiet reach of the Caribbean. Almost no one ever goes near it. In those waters, you could sail for a week on end and never see another vessel. If you really want to be alone on a wide, wide sea, like uh, bound for mischief, or even on your honeymoon, you couldn't find anywhere better. Queenie, darling, you like to take the helm for a while? Oh, Ralph, can I? I've been just longing to. Well, if we're to spend all our lives together till death or whatever do his part, <laughs> you might as well start learning how to sail. Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> but it's heavy, isn't it? Don't you have power steering? Darling, uh, a 30-foot sloop doesn't exactly handle like a Cadillac. Keep your eyes on the sails, and if they begin to spill, you turn just a mite away from the wind until they fill again. Hey, what's that over there? Where? Um, five points to starboard, where I'm pointing. Two points to port, actually. And that's a porpoise. These waters are full... Are... No, that's not a porpoise. Hey, that's a man. Uh, give me the helm. Hold tight, we're going to jive. We're going to jive? Whatever for? Oh. Darling, the life belt there. Toss it overboard as soon as I come into the wind. Close to him as you can. Well, how, how will I know when you come into the wind? I'll yell. Oh, hold on there. What do you mean, hold on there? I'm coming. I'm coming. What, what do you think I'm doing? Right, now, get ready, Queenie. Now, throw it to him. Can you reach it? Oh, that wasn't very close, was it? Uh, thank you, ma'am. That was a real kind thing to do. Now, if you wouldn't mind throwing me a line. Ralphie, he wants me to throw him a line. He means a rope. Well, where do I find a rope? Uh, coiled right there at your feet, darling. Well, let me do it. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Scholar and a gentleman. <laughs> Been treading water for a long, long time. Hoping the current might carry me to some sort of landfall. My name is Harry Bennett. Mr. Uh... Quince. Uh, Ralph Quince, Mr. Bennett. Quince. And this is uh, Mrs. Quince. Queenie Quince. Uh, We're on our honeymoon. Honeymoon. Uh, my condolences. Huh? I got uh, my, my congratulations to both of you. <laughs> it's always nice to meet beautiful young people enjoying that first fine... Careless rapture. I uh, I don't suppose you happen to have a drink aboard, Mr. Quince, would you? Oh, yes. Never sail out unprepared is my motto. There's Coke, ginger ale, and diet root beer. What'll it be? Well, never mind. It's not that important. Darling, there is a bottle of bourbon in the galley. There is? Well, where on earth did that come from? I put it there. A glass, Mr. Bennett? No, don't bother with a glass, honey. Save the washing up. Oh, that's what I figured. <laughs> Trim little craft you got here, Mr. Quince. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she's nice. Oh, please call me Ralph, Harry. I never did like my surname too much. It always makes me think of some kind of marmalade. <laughs> I, uh, I don't suppose you'd like to tell me what you were doing in the water there. I mean, more than 20 miles from the nearest land. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Well, here we are. Well... Thank you, Miss Quince. You don't know what a godsend a good-looking bottle can be. Cheers. Cheers. You really ought to get out of those wet clothes. But, uh, mm. Darling, don't be so eager. Well, um, they'll dry out soon enough. Nice day like this, bright blue sky, dark green sea, and the sun to sizzle the marrow in your bones. <laughs> Makes a man feel good to be alive. Uh, Queenie, Harry was about to tell us how he came to be where he was. I mean, it's not too often you find a man nonchalantly floating about so many miles out to sea. <laughs> oh, not nonchalantly, I assure you. I was real worried there for a while. You folks saved my life. I'm deeply grateful. The only one I've got, and I'm kind of fond of it. But what happened, Mr. Bennett? I had my boat shot out from under me. Shot out from under you? 
Nice little 20-footer. Blown out from under me with a bazooka. Just got through painting her, too. A bazooka? The shell hit way below the waterline or I'd have been killed. I just got a few splinters in my backside. If it's okay with you, I'll ask Mrs. Quince to take some of the longer ones out for me before the day is over. Hmm? Make sitting down kind of uncomfortable. But who would do such a terrible thing? And why? You know who it was? I know who it was, all right. It was a pronk who calls himself Skipper Sampson. As for why, I'm not too sure about that. And I'll admit, it would be kind of interesting to find out. You know an island called Desiderati? Just a little pinprick in the ocean, a million miles from nowhere. Desiderati? Yeah, that's where we're headed. You are? Well, how about that? Once a week, I go over there to pick up my lobster traps. Best lobsters in the world. My place for the moment is on an island called La Sola. Great place if you like solitude. So no lobster is worth eating. But what are you planning to do on Desiderati? There's nothing there, you know, except lobsters. That's not true, Mr. Bennett. There's a fortune there and buried treasure. Pirate treasure. <laughs> Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at both Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. When is a window more than a window? When it's decorated with elegant Spindrift Semi-Sheer Panel Curtains from Sears. Sears Spindrift Semi-Sheer, they're so natural looking. The fabric is full-bodied. The pattern texture is soft and subtle. I had to choose curtains for my new house. Spindrift Semi-Sheer come in so many colors and can be used to create so many styles. They're easy to care for. Machine wash and tumble dry. Hmm, that's nice. Make your windows more than just windows with Spindrift Semi-Sheer Curtains in the drapery department at larger Sears retail stores. For Mother's Day, give Mom a hand. Yeah! With handy appliances from Sears. Prices have been cut on Sears' best food processor, 14-speed blender with jars, and a push-button self-cleaning broiler oven. Save money and she'll save time on ironing day with a spray steam-and-dry self-cleaning iron. So give Mom a helping hand on Mother's Day. And save at Sears. Yeah! Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. At most larger Sears retail stores. Treasure, she says. Pirate treasure. Don't tell me. You're going looking for it. Yes, we are. And we're going to find it. How about there's a treasure map, too? Yes, there is. Which you bought for 50 bucks from a down-and-out sailor with a wooden leg and a patch over one eye. He was not a sailor. He was not down-and-out. And he had two good legs and two good eyes. Well, I think one eye was glass. Uh, he had a kind of squint. But there was definitely no patch over it. Mm. Ah, that's good. Ralph, you sure you won't have some of this bourbon before I finish it off? Seems a pity to waste it all on a palate as jaded as mine. Thank you, no, I don't imbibe. What about you, honey? Do you imbibe? On occasion, Mr. Bennett, I have been known to, yes. <laughs> Here. Thank you. <laughs> ah, oh, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> And Ralph didn't pay any $50 for the map. He paid 2000 Oh, well. A guy once said that a man's follies are sometimes the most interesting things he has, Ralph. <laughs> We've met this kind of skepticism before, Harry. But I'm not the babe in the woods you'd seem to take me for. It so happens I'm an expert in this field. And you think there's buried treasure on Desiderani? Oh, I know there is. I've studied the map, analyzed it, dated it. It's genuine. And I'll admit, that's very rare. Harry, you ever hear of a woman named Ann Bonney? Uh, there was a two-year-old filly named Ann Bonney once. I lost my shirt on her at Santa Anita. Uh, this Ann Bonney was a professional pirate. Right here in the Caribbean. 18th century. Uh -huh. Mistress of her own ship and good at her job. She buried three treasure chests at Desiderati someplace. And now I have a map showing precisely where. <laughs> a con game, Ralph. You got suckered. No. 
No, you, you have to know that this kind of map is not that easy to read. The directions are always in very recondite code. And to try and break that code, that's the hardest part. Sometimes the impossible part. Now, this one has a poem that seems to make no sense at all. You want to hear a poem, Harry? Uh, why not? Mind if I sit down to enjoy it? Oh. Nope, nope. <laughs> I won't sit down. <laughs> read it, Queenie. Would you do that? Only an eagle sees the twisted thread. The tree still lives, although the man be dead. Well, those two clues are easy. Go on. Four hundred paces as the soldiers kept when Antony with Cleopatra slept. Oh, it's another easy one, but calculated to throw a lot of people way off course. Though nave and cloister both might well be found, the pipe does not give off the organ sound. The way is right, although it be not so... A false step now will lead to naught but woe. A shelter here to wait for early bells. A hawk six-footed, now the story tells. <laughs> That's a very nice poem, isn't it? Well, I, I got the last clue there. A hawk six-footed has to be a rock that looks like a hawk and a six feet high, right? No, wrong. Huh? And Bonnie was writing about the sun, actually. The sun? Yeah. Oh, well, crossword puzzle stuff and pretty amateurish, as a matter of fact. The Egyptian sun god, Ra, was usually depicted with the head of a hawk. But the really tough one is that bit about the bells. Uh, tell me, though, uh, no one has ever gone looking for Anne Bonnie's doubloons? Oh, eight expeditions in the last 50 years, all of them way off pinpoint. You sound very sure of yourself, Ralph. I am. I spent two days on the island last week. I started off looking for the twisted thread that only an eagle could see and found it in the first couple of hours. A thin geological fault running clear across the top of the bluff. Oh, believe me, Harry, I know exactly where to dig. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. You mind if I help out? Well, it looks like you're stuck with me now, anyway. It would be very nice to have you along, Mr. Bannon. All right. You tell me about the guy who sold you the map. Uh, Mr. Wentworth, a charming man. <laughs> but sad, really. Really very sad. He was sure he had something of immense value, and he didn't know what to do with it. I rather liked him. Uh, that's because he was big and, well, in spite of that glass eye, very handsome. Ralphie, unkind again. How big? Oh, six foot four. Cute little black mustache, by any chance? Well, yes, you know him. Yeah, I know him. That's the pronk who blew up my boat, nearly blew me up with it. Your Mr. Wentworth is also my skipper, Sampson. Very dangerous man who doesn't think people should live too long if they get in his way. Um, Miss Quince, sad is not the right word. I'll take a considerable bet that right now he's one of the happiest men around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad you're so happy, Skipper. Oh, Blake, we got plenty to laugh at. All a man has to do is use his wits and his gun, and he's got it made. We'll be rich. Now, yeah. this should be high enough. We got us a good view of the beach here. We better keep an eye on the other side of the island, too, just in case there's stray fishermen out there on the water. What stray fishermen? Nobody ever comes here. Oh, you're an idiot, Blake. Harry Bennett was coming here, wasn't he? Okay, Skipper, okay. I'll send Charlie to the other side with a walkie-talkie as soon as he gets up here. Yeah. Anything moves out there, I want to know. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. What is happening? Oh, you're going crazy. You do. Here, drop. Yes. We've got to get out of this house. I don't know what it is, but we've got to get out. Oh, I knew there was something about that picture. Come on, Georgia. Hurry. Marion. Marion, look. It's moving. Oh, the lion is coming into this house. Run, Georgia. Run. 
Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of the CBS Radio Network stations. The big one's got a contract out on you and me and everybody. The big one kills more than half the people who die each year. My name is Hart, Sam Hart, and I've been after the big one for years. The victims are typically wealthy, young, attractive, white, female or male, elder, black, middle class, not so pretty, hardworking, fashionably bored, corporate magnets, high school dropouts, no criminal record, just plain folks, eccentric writers, housewives, free thinkers, rock stars. Everybody. The big one hits everybody. We're talking about heart and blood vessel disease. More people die from heart and blood vessel disease each year than from all other causes combined. The American Heart Association thinks it well worth your while to learn the risk factors of heart disease and avoid them. We're fighting for your life. Richard Widmark again, and I have to tell you, the innocents aboard that sloop have no idea at all of the mortal danger they're sailing into. Right now, Skipper Sampson is being joined by the third member of his murderous crew. Oh, there you are, Mr. Sampson. Hey, sorry, I wasn't ever going to find you. We got any beer up here? Oh, in the pack there. It's a real shame we have to waste it on you. Oh, hot day like this ain't nothing like a can of beer to make a man feel good. <laughs> Hey, now ain't that a real pretty view along the beach there? And just tell me about the launch, Charlie. Yo, you know, I, I got the launch hit real good, Mr. Sampson, sir. <laughs> Hell, I don't think I'm ever going to find it again myself. <laughs> it's real good in among the rocks there. Yeah, and yeah, if it's okay with you, I think I'll stretch out and have me a snooze while we're waiting. If you get back over on the other side of the island, jackass, watch out for any boats. You see anything at all, get on your blower fast. Oh, there ain't gonna be no boats out there, you know that. Get moving, Charlie. Uh, yes, Mr. Sampson, sir. I, I, I'm on the way, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I... Charlie doesn't find himself a new song. I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up for him and shove it down his throat. Listen, Skipper, what if Ralph Quince isn't as good as he's cracked up to? Well, he's the best. Makes more money with his treasure hunting than the next ten men in line. Where'd you get that map, Skipper? Can't be too many of the genuine article lying around. I got it from a down-and-out sailor with a wooden leg and a parrot on his shoulder. Uh, just asking. Well, I lifted it out of the museum on Barbados. Hey. Hey, a ship. Is that him? Hand me the glasses. Yeah, that's him. Running with the wind to make it good speed to be here in five, ten minutes. Well, I'll be. What is it, Skipper? He's got Harry Bennett on board. Bennett? Take a look. Yeah. Yeah, that's Harry Bennett, all right. How, how the hell did that happen? Well, some guys just seem to have a knack for survival. Great. My trigger finger's itching already. As soon as they start digging. Are you crazy? No. We wait. We wait till they bring up the treasure. Make damn sure we've got what we came here for. Then, and not before, we start firing. We just topple them down into the hole they're going to dig. Their own grave. Nice, neat, and tidy. And all those golden doubloons are ours. Hmm? Oh, the first aid kit, Queenie. Oh, oh, which I forgot to pack. Oh. Oh, could I please have the bourbon bottle, Mr. Bennett? Yeah. You bet. There's a couple of drinks left in it. Yeah. Uh, ooh, that, oh, honey, that burns. The best disinfectant there is. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. You should be in good shape now. And could I please have the bottle back? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. The human condition, Mrs. Quince, gets battered about once in a while, doesn't it? Are you feeling better, Harry? Yeah. With applications of sour mash at both ends, man just has to feel better. <laughs> yeah, binoculars on board, Ralph. Oh, sure, in the Chester. Hmm. Pretty little place to sit around here, isn't it? Say, why don't we sail clear around it, Ralph? Look. I don't know. 
You really want to? Won't take that long. Hell, the whole island isn't much bigger than a man-sized hamburger. Well... Be nice to know if there's not another boat anchored in the lee of the cliffs there. Well, I don't mind if there is. We're legal. I was just wondering, why Skipper Sampson doesn't want any strangers like me hanging around Desiderade when you're going treasure hunting there? Oh, Harry, if, if you think there's going to be any trouble, I, I, I mean, we could easily haul off and come back in two or three months' time. I mean, well, with Queenie here, it, it's not as if there were just the two of us. Well, if that doesn't take the male chauvinist case. What do you mean, haul off? You crazy? The first thing you learn in my business, Ralph, is that you don't run away till you see something worth running from. That's when you haul out real fast. Time hasn't come yet. What is your business, Mr. Bennett? Anything that'll turn a fair, honest dollar in this quince, and we have to recognize that uh, honesty is an argumentative quality. You nervous? Oh, you got to be kidding. If you get nervous, Mr. Bennett, just hold on to my hand. You'll be okay. <laughs> That's my gal. Take her around, Ralph. Close in. We got lots of water here. Hey, Mr. Sampson, come in. Come in, Mr. Sampson, sir. This is Charlie. Do you read me? Over. I read you, Charlie. You got a boat heading your way, right? Right, Mr. Sampson. Uh, through. Real close in. Three people aboard. Two guys and a real nice-looking female. <laughs> oh, you won't believe the bikini she's got on. <laughs> hey, one of them guys is Bennett. I thought we knocked him off. Is he anywhere near the launch? Any chance he'll see it? Uh, no way, Mr. Sampson, sir. It's hit real good. No, no, he's sailing right past the ravine now. He hasn't seen it. He's jiving, taking her around the headland. Jeez, that's a real nice-looking broad. Keep your mind on your work, Charlie. Over and out. Yes, sir, but that ain't easy. I ain't that old. <laughs> yes, sir, over and out. Yes, sir. I was thinking about the, uh, the pipe that doesn't give off the organ sound. Mm -hmm. Now, that has to be a tunnel, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. There were two that were close to the rock that looked like the nave of a church. So I took the one that wasn't right. In other words, the left. Uh-huh. And when it split up two ways, I followed the right again and found it was wrong. Oh, it was too easy going. No woe at all. So I went back and tried the other branch. Oh, <laughs> and I have to tell you, Harry, that false step business was right. I nearly fell 200 feet a couple of times. Anybody want a sandwich? We got a great picnic basket here. Harry? Well... <laughs> Don't mind if I do, Mrs. Quince. I came to a cave at last, right on the beach. Oh, a huge cave, more than 600 yards long and half as wide. Like the whole of the island's mountain had been hollowed out. The floor was granite, interspersed with silted sand. You know, I worried about those early bells. A clue I hadn't yet been able to work out, so I looked for rock formations again. Hmm? Nothing remotely like bells. Mustard, Mr. Bennett? Onions? Uh, the works, honey. I uh, thank you. I, I was just going to climb down the rock to the water and swim out to the boat for breakfast when a tiny circle of sunlight came in through a borehole in the top of the cave and fell on a patch of silted sand. And I knew, Harry, I knew. It, it came to me in a flash. Anne Bonnie was brought up on a farm in the Carolinas. And the first sound of the day she would have heard, the bells of the cows being taken out to pasture. Uh -huh. What that couplet meant was the first ray of the sun in the very early morning where it first strikes. I marked that spot with a cairn, and that's where we have to dig, Harry, and bring up a million bucks or more in gold doubloons. Okay. Oh, we're at low tide, and I'm going to ram the beach. All right, hold tight, everyone. Queenie, get ready to toss the anchor overboard. Anchor? Oh, ah, oh, yes. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? Ankle down. Shake free. I bring in the jib. Jib free. Reef the mainsail. What do you mean, reef the mainsail? Who needs it? Oh. Well, we have some stuff to carry ashore. Shovels, pulleys, ropes, a winch. A million dollars in gold weighs an awful lot. You know, Ralph, I have this funny feeling it's not going to be as easy as you think. Yeah. Your mom. 
By nature, she's different than any other mother in the world. Whether she's social, romantic, offbeat, or as classic as apple pie, you'll find a special fragrance to fit her nature at Sears. For Mother's Day, choose Revlon's Charlie for the contemporary woman on the run. Chantu, the essence of ever-so-soft romance. Or Prince Machiavelli favorites like Windsong, Aviance, or Cachet. This Mother's Day, discover gifts of fragrance that capture the nature of every woman at Sears. And she leaps ahead wearing Sears Action Playwear for juniors. They're saucy yellow bibbed overalls with a striped tank top underneath. What a look! But wait, another girl in bright blue pleated shorts and rugby-style shirt hops up from behind. Ladies and gentlemen, who win this leapfrog race? Both look like winners in these cool cotton tops and bottoms of cotton and polyester. All bright summer wow colors. And they're, they're tied! Sears Junior Action Playwear for championship look. I know. We'll give Mom a Sears Best Food Processor with attachments. Oh, sure, money bags. Listen, Sears Chop, $10 off, so it's only $49.99. Oh, three of us could buy it. But would Mom like a Sears Food Processor? Sure. Complete with four attachments, it can quickly knead bread, chop meat, shred cheese, puree tomato. Hey, pizza! <laughs> Sears Best Food Processor, only $49.99. Save $10 till May 26th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Richard Widmark again. And here's the concluding act of Ann Bonnie's Gold. Keep down. Give me the glasses. Take. And that little wife of his is kind of pretty, ain't you? Yeah, I noticed. You want to count me in, too? You get a share of the gold. That's all you get a share of. Hmm. They're heading for that cave. We're going to lose them. They got to come out again when they find the loop. I make the range to be uh, 100 to 50 yards. <laughs> like shooting fish in a barrel. It's a crazy place, Ralph. <laughs> when I was in here last week, I got this wild idea. I shouted a single four-letter word at the top of my voice. I swear to you, it came reverberating back at me for all of three minutes. Uh, shall I demonstrate? No! <laughs> Let's get out of here. We'll go over and dig right in the entrance. We can talk without having our words of wisdom flung back in our teeth. Ah, here. In the early morning, it's, it's still heavy shade here. And that little circle of light fell right there. Well, then, let's start digging. Give me a beer, Blake. Okay. I keep thinking... They ought to be inside that cave, not outside it. Now, wouldn't that make more sense? Why? I don't know. Well, Ralph Quince knows what he's doing. They've shifted a lot of sand in three hours. Looks to me like they're down five, five and a half feet. <laughs> How deep do we have to go, Ralph? <sighs> Oh, you mean you haven't figured that out? Huh? Well, the six-foot hawk, remember? The sun god Ra had only two feet. Oh, and, and he was a, a lot more than six feet tall. So, that figure is to tell us the depth. Whew. Let's take a rest. I'm bush. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll wander over and pick up one of my lobster traps. There's not much of a day left. We'll finish it off with a good dinner. Oh, you bet. Yeah. Like that, Mr. Bennett? Bennett? No. How come you know my name? Oh, ho, ho, ho. don't tell me. 
You're one of the guys off that launch. Well, I don't know your name, sir. I, I don't know what launch you're talking about. And what's your name? Uh, Charlie, sir. I just come over here to, to, to pick up some lobsters. Yeah. I see you found one of my lobster traps. I also see you have a walkie-talkie. Hand it over, Charlie. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Bennett, sir. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sir, that's a $200 radio you just stepped on. It's obsolete, Charlie. This is the age of obsolescence. It is? Uh, you mind if I get to my feet, Mr. Bennett? Now, I'm not going to hurt you none. I'm an old man. Where's Skipper Sampson, Charlie? Well, well uh, I don't rightly know, Mr. Bennett. I ain't seen him in quite a while. Charlie. Uh... The skipper is up on top of the bluff, Mr. Bennett. And who is with him, Charlie? Just one man, sir. A fellow named Blake. Never liked him too much. He always makes fun of me. Where's the launch, Charlie? Oh, just the other side of them rocks, Mr. Bennett. I got her hid real good, just like Mr. Sampson told me. <laughs> Close in shore. He, he don't like to get wet. Well, let's you and me take a walk, Charlie. Yes, sir. And, uh... Charlie. Yes, Mr. Bennett? I I'm really am sorry I hit you. I feel real bad about it. Oh, that's okay. I've been hit before. There she is, Mr. Bennett. Good. Let's get aboard. Okay. Only uh, watch out for that gangplank, sir. I didn't mash it down the way I'm supposed to. Uh -huh. Now, if you'll just tell me where the seacocks are. The, the seacocks? Well, they're down in the hold, Mr. Bennett. Where else would they be? Lead on, Charlie. Yes, sir. Well, there they are, Mr. Bennett. Three seacocks. Open them up for me, Charlie. Will you do that? Open them up? I can't do that, Mr. Bennett. It sure sinks. That's the general idea, Charlie. Open them up. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, open them up, the man says. And we're going to sink a $40,000 and launch in 12 fathoms water. Oh. Uh, I'll open, Mr. Bennett, sir. Uh, that means we got about two minutes to get off this ship. Just one more thing, Charlie. Hey, sir, uh, we don't have no time now. I can't swim. Just show me where the bar is. Oh, well, that's different. Uh, up to the companionway, Mr. Bennett, sir. Now, Charlie. Charlie, you'll have to sit down, stretch your legs out, and give me your boot laces. Oh, Mr. Bennett, sir, you, you don't have to tie me up none. You can trust me. Charlie, the only time in my life I ever trusted anyone, I ended up having to marry her. Have a drink while I fix your ankles. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> there. Uh, is that too tight? Yeah, that's... A, that's right on my varicose veins. Oh, all right. There. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, that's better. You only, um... Uh, only what, Charlie? If, well, if you was to tie my hands in front instead of behind, you could leave me one of them bottles you got, and I could put it to real good use. <laughs> yeah, all you got to do is take the cork out from it. <laughs> Charlie, you're a thinking man. I <laughs> yes, like that. <laughs> Cheers, Charlie. Good help, Miss Bennett, sir. <laughs> only a... Hey, don't try to leave this island with them treasure chests. That's what they're waiting up there for. With, with two high-powered rifles. Yeah, I already figured that one out, Charlie. Oh, and when Mr. Samson finds you, will you give him a message for me? Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Just tell him that my considered opinion is that he's a number one pronk. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, pronk? <laughs> Queenie, something went wrong. No, no, darling. We just have to persevere. We have to keep on digging. Oh, my eight feet down and nothing. Darling, I goofed. Somewhere along the line, I goofed. It's back to the drawing board all over again. 
Hi there. Uh. Hey. You guys have been going down pretty good. Look at I brung. Lobsters. Hey. It's bourbon. Uh. <laughs> well, it's getting dark. I figure we might mosey back to the sloop and take her out to sea. And have us a really good dinner. I'm a genius with lobsters. Uh, something went wrong, Harry. Somewhere along the way, I lost up a clue. Uh, throw us a line. You bet. Oh, but Mr. Bennett, uh, where did you find the bourbon? Honey, if you live right the way I do, the good Lord always comes to your rescue in times of stress. It's axiomatic. But right now, we have to get out of here with reasonable dispatch because there's a very nasty man sitting on top of the cliff there with a... A couple of high-powered rifles waiting to pick us off just as soon as we dig up that treasure chest for him. There's, there, there's a, a what? Ralphie, you don't look so good when your face is white. Hold your breath. They'll get red again. My old friend and enemy, Skipper Sampson. So what we do is we leave everything here, like we're working again in the morning, and we go home. It was a nice try, Ralph. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Skipper, they're leaving. But they've left their equipment behind. And that means... And that means they're going back to the sloop for dinner and a night's rest. They'll continue again in the morning. Mm. Fair enough. Patience is all we need. We'll go back to the lodge. We'll have dinner, too. And maybe we'll even get a little liquored up because things are going great <laughs> like... <laughs> Watch those lobsters. You're close to scorching them. I am not scorching the lobsters. I am sick to death. I lost it up. Don't feel bad, Ralph. Win a few, lose a few. The world still keeps on turning, right? Uh, mind if I take a look at your map? Oh, now Mr. Bennett is going to solve the problem with one quick look. Ralphie, you're being unkind again. I'm sure that is not what Mr. Bennett had in mind. Here you are, Harry. Yeah. This is a work of art in itself, isn't it? The poem is in Anne Bonnie's own handwriting? Of course it is. And that's her signature? Yes. And the date, July 22, 1718. Hey, that was the date Captain Woods Rogers became governor of the Bahamas and the real crackdown on Caribbean pirates began. Did you know that? Yes, I know that. Ralph... Ralph, I just threw you with a missing clue. Your mind's not working anymore. What missing clue? The world keeps on turning. Yeah? On July 22 of any given year, that little circle of light sent by the sun god Ra will be exactly where it was on July 22 in 1718. And that is not where we were digging today in this month of February, Ralph. Right now... That circle of light will be two, three hundred feet away. Who knows? In any direction. My God, that's it. So we come back here on July 22 and start over? That's what we have to do. Yeah. That's it. Oh, my God, that's it. But what about Skipper Sampson and his men? Ah, uh, by then someone will have found them marooned on a desert island. I like to think they'll maybe be diving in 12 fathoms of water to recover cans of baked beans and bottles of bourbon just to survive. And by the time July 22 comes around, they'll be out there in the wild blue yonder looking for new suckers. It's all going to be yours, Ralph. Oh, Harry, I don't know how I can ever repay you. You don't? And I'll tell you, when we dig up that treasure in five months' time, all you have to do... Just turn your back for like 30 seconds while I slip a couple of those doubloons into my pants pocket. Just a couple. Or a three pull or a four pull. I won't be greedy, Ralph. It's not my style. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save 36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel belted radio tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. 
Installation available at both Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. This is my first night camping with my family of five. Now I'm really glad I packed my Sears family-style tent. It's Sears' best tent, tested by Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to conquer Mount Everest. This tent stands six feet nine inches in the center and has a sewn-in 10 by 14-foot floor. It sleeps eight, plenty of room for my family, even the dog. We like the windows that can be zipped shut from the inside and this large front canopy. Sears' best family-style tent is built to be lived in, and if it's good enough for Hillary, it's good enough for my family at most larger Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The power spray carpet cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Anne Bonnie's Gold was written by Alan Caillou, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were John Daner, Joan McCall, and Lou Horn. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Hans Conried, and Vic Parrott. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollipson. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. This is Mel Blank and Voices of My Business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character. Daffy Duck. <laughs> or a. Uh, Porky Pig. Or. Bugs Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes, and you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all uh, the air, folks. That library. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Is your car equipped to handle emergencies? Well, here's a list of essential items which will enable you to better handle an emergency situation. A car jack and lug wrench should always be carried in case of a flat tire. Be sure you know how the jack operates and the correct procedure for changing a tire. Flares and reflectors provide warning to other motorists that your car is stopped, and both are essential safety items. A tow strap or chain enables a car to be pulled out of the mud or the snow. Battery jumper cables help a motorist solve a dead battery problem quickly. A small fire extinguisher can prevent a small problem from turning into a large one. But you'd better keep it in the passenger compartment where you can get to it quickly. A first aid kit can come in handy in all sorts of minor medical emergencies. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. You call me one, you're hurting my neck. You'll be hurting a lot more if you don't sit down and do some hand wrestling with me right now. You killed a grizzly.